Absolutely. I think uh, the major developments over the past 10, 15 years have been in the genetic breakthroughs that have been made in Parkinson's disease. Many, say 20 years ago, uh, it was taught as being the archetype of a non-genetic disease. Uh, and yet now, we now know that's not true. In fact, are discovering quite a, uh, a significant number of genes involved in Parkinson's disease. Individually, they're all uh, relatively rare or rare-ish, but cumulatively, they're adding to quite a deep understanding or clues to where we might go with Parkinson's research. Well, in my opinion, it's, I think we need to, we've got this list of genes now. We want to work out uh, whether they interact with each other or if they do, when and how, where there's a common pathway to disease or where there's a multiple multitude of pathways. Uh, and I think much of the research from many groups around the world are focused on trying to, uh, if you like, in simpli simple terms, put the pieces of the jigsaw into a more uh, organized fashion. It is one that uh, uh, exercises many of our minds. I'm a bit more optimistic than I was. Um, it's true that we have no really good or even modestly good uh, disease modifying treatments. We have very good symptomatic treatments. So the first five years of people's lives with Parkinson's disease, we can often find quite good treatments to manage a lot of the symptoms. After that, it does become more problematic. So I think we're looking at, even if not a cure, we're looking at drugs that might prolong that process so that it gets, so the symptomatic treatments last longer. Um, I think uh, cures will be based on the pathways that are discovered uh, from the genetic discoveries. So even though the genetic discoveries are individually rare, I think the clues that they give you to how the cells dysfunction uh, will be a logical, rational route into therapies. That's my hope, at least. In terms of our lack of successful disease-modifying treatments, I think who should? It, the answer to that is um, really everybody should, um, should make their own decision as to whether they want a genetic test or not. So only a relatively small proportion of the population, and I'm, I'm going to say roughly somewhere between 5 or 10%, even now would we be able to identify a precise genetic cause. And even if we did that, telling them what that risk actually meant to their children or their brothers or sisters is more complex. So even now we're really in a process of being able to give information, and that information is couched in certain uh, broad terms. And so if somebody says, well, I don't need a gene test. Well, that's a perfectly reasonable point of view to take. So I don't think anybody needs one, but if they wanted one, then I think we uh, should work towards making that available, but with the right information. Not at the moment. I mean, I think the, one of the big theories in Parkinson's disease genetics has been that it's some combination of our genetic makeup with something or some things unknown and toxic to us that we get exposed to through life and that eventually uh, that causes damage to our brain cells and gives rise to Parkinson's disease. It is a reasonable theory. And of course, the, the answer to that would be, if you happen to have a selection of genes that made you more at risk, and you knew what the environmental triggers were, that you could then avoid the uh, environmental triggers or take something to counteract that effect. So that's the theory. Nobody's ever been able to prove that. Um, and we'll have to wait and see. I, ha I have to say, in the discoveries that have been made from the familial Parkinson studies, uh, nothing yet has pointed the way uh, to uh, a dietary or nutritional type therapy right now, but we'll see.